So how real does this feel now after three days, four days, whatever it's been that you're back here in Miami? Yeah, it's definitely real now. I just went through a Miami Heat practice. <laughs> so it's officially real today. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely been surreal, you know, these last you know, 72 hours, um, you know, to, to be in one locker room and then in a couple hours to be playing with another team. It was kind of weird, um, but it's the best weird that I've had. Now, you mentioned the Miami Heat practice. Yeah. I think people have heard about that. <laughs> but what is that like? It's, <laughs> Miami practice is intense. Um, you know, I, I, I miss it. You know, it's, it's coming in and it's, it's getting to, you know, working on the things that, you know, we're going to do. It's getting to understanding the individuals, how they're going to do it. But it's, you're not just walking through it. You're going at it. Right. Um, you know, you're, going, you're getting in this. For me, it's about getting in a game shape for the style of play that the Miami Heat play. Um, so it's, it's just intense. And... Um, you know, it's my first one, and, you know, I, I, at the words I told Coach, I said, I kind of missed this. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Now, what else did you miss? Has, have you done anything else since you've been back that made you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm back in Miami? Well, I just I just miss laying by my pool. <laughs> the things I took for granted, Yeah. you know. Um, I, I haven't done a lot of things, you know, but, you know, everywhere, if I've been anywhere outside in Miami, it's been, it's been a great ovation. You know, I, I feel that. I don't know how it was when I wasn't here, but right now I feel like the city has just, you know, got a buzz going, uh, and not just about me. I think about, you know, what I can add and help this team do. You know, I think they love this team, and to add someone like me with the veteran leadership and you know ability to be able to help on the basketball court as well, um, I think the city is, is happy with you know the team that you know that we have. So the buzz is there in the city, man, and it's it's cool to go out and feel it, you know. You said maybe you take some of that stuff for granted. Like, has it been overwhelming though? Like the the return? No, not yet. No, <laughs> no the return has been good. You yeah. know, um, when 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 you live here for 13 years and you know I've I've been able to have success and um, on and off the court, um, I'm pretty popular in the city of Miami. Um, so you know you kind of stay away from it a little bit. You kind of stay in and you know not go you know out and find it. Uh, but now it's kind of like, let's go. <laughs> you know, we missed it. We, I missed you guys. You guys missed me. Let's have this big love fest, you know, for a little while. Give me an example of something that's happened since you've been back. You went out somewhere, anywhere within the city. Yeah, so I went to dinner last night. You know, I went to one of my favorite places, uh, Kiki on the river, you know. I'm on the river um, at nighttime, and you know, as soon as you walk in, it's just like a slow clap that's turned into a whole ovation <laughs> for like 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. And it's cool, you know, it's kind of that, that moment as well where I look around and I say, well, most of the people in here was probably 10 years old when I came to Miami, you know? So it's like they'd never seen me before in person anyway. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just, it's been cool, man. It, it's been special to be able to get back into the routine, get back into the, my drives, the places that I go, um, get back and, and be around my kids and, you know, have conversations with them, watch games with them, sit down and talk about school and all these kind of things. Even in a short period of time, it's like, this is, this is what I've missed. I know you talked about um, how you and Pat saw each other uh, at Henry Thomas's funeral and there yeah. was a hug and that's all needed to happen. Yeah. Was there more than a hug though? Was there a conversation? No, uh, we, the only conversation was about Hank, you know, it was, it's a very, um, for myself and UD and uh, other players that Hank represented, it was a, it was a tough time for all of us. Sure. And, um, you know, especially, you know, it was great to celebrate his life, but it was also, you know, emotional. Um, so I think Pat's seen that as well. And, you know, as I was doing the rounds and talking to everybody and hugging everybody, Pat came behind me, you know, and grabbed me. And, um, you know, turned around and seen his face, and we just embraced. There was no words needed to be said. And then we just talked about Hank. And, you know, it was no basketball needed to be talked about. It was nothing that uh, at that moment it wasn't the time. And then now, a couple of days later, you know, I'm back here. We could talk about all the basketball and everything we need to, but we, we really don't. You know, I think that hug and that embrace, well, we both missed each other. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like I missed this guy. And uh, it was a great moment. How would you – classify your relationship with him like from beginning till now um it's, it's always been a, a respect of you know, pat rowdy the the coach and pat rowdy the the president um because you know he cares about winning and he has a he has a culture he has a, a belief a system uh and i know it works you know it's just like any relationship you know you you go through trying times um but you know Overall, we've had a great relationship. We have a great amount of respect for each other. We love each other. Um, I know, you know, I'm successful because I'm in, I've been in his organization, um, and I've added a little bit to his legacy. Not a lot, <laughs> just a little bit to his legacy, but, um, you know, I'm definitely um, an important part of, you know, this franchise that was important to him when he came here to get this 
franchise off the ground. Um, so that connection and that relationship, you know, will, will always be forever. If both sides got to do a do-over in the summer of 2016, do you think they would? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you can go back, I would think we'd do over a lot of things. But, you know, I think for me and, um, and all, I think for the, the organization, I think for the city of Miami, um, by, by me leaving, um, I think we all appreciate each other just a little bit more. You know, if I never left, um, you know, I'm not saying they wouldn't appreciate me, but it wouldn't be the same. And I, and I, and I, same here. You know, I appreciate the city more. I appreciate the organization more. Um, and I had to leave to figure that out, you know, and the same thing, I think, from the city of Miami and, and also the organization. So, you know, everything worked itself out the way it did for a reason, I believe. All right, so you're here. Um, what was the conversation like with Spo about what you were going to do in that first game? Well, that's funny. So I get to the arena and I got a million things to do and I'm trying to get prepared. And I, I, um, I wasn't even on my phone and Spo had texted me to come and, come and talk to him before the game so we could talk about. I never got in there to see him and we just played the game. And after the game, I seen the text. <laughs> I was at the restaurant. I was like, Coach, I didn't see this. He was like, no, we did fine. Your, your, the unit you was in did great, and we'll talk about it over the coming days. So we had no really communication besides when I first came to shoot around, and we talked real quick. But everything happened so fast. That first game is just like, let's just get out here and let's, let's get this ovation out the way. Let's get this we won't wait channel out the way so then we can get to you know basketball. So we did that. So he calls you off the bench. Yeah. All of a sudden, it starts to build. The crowd starts to get nuts. Yeah. And what was that like? No, it was great. He, so I remember everything. So Spo turned around and gave me that look, and just pointed at me. And um, you know, I run up, and you know, they, they start going, you know, like this, and it, it started going, you know, as loud as I've heard it. You know, I've heard it loud in Game Six and Game Seven of the Finals and stuff like that. But it, it definitely felt like that kind of moment. Uh, so I'm trying to enjoy it, but also I'm trying to get ready to play the game and, you know, and talk to my teammates, you know, and all these kind of things. But the next day when I woke up to kind of go back and look at it, to see my kids there, um, to see my loved ones, my wife, see how proud she was and, you know, my team, everybody. Uh, it was a cool moment, man. I saw you barking out orders as soon as you walked yeah, in. Yeah, like, who you got? Who you got? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> first of all, we need to win. Right. You know, this yeah. this moment, like I'm all about. I'm, you know, I'm never about. Oh, I gotta I gotta play well for. It's always about. Oh, in any, any big moment when it comes to a basketball game, it's like, hey, I want to win because that's gonna make this night special. Me getting 20 points or me, you know, doing this, and that's not going to make this night special. What makes it special is winning. So I'm coming in. I'm like, I haven't played with these guys. So I'm like, Tyler, who you got? <laughs> Just as, like, I don't know, you know. So yeah. it was cool. But I was trying to focus on the game. But I appreciate it later. That block at the end was nice, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I can put my imprint on the game. You know, it was like set up perfect for me, right? Um, you know, and as it, was, it was one of those moments where I was like, this is what I used to do. And like I said, I didn't jump as high, <laughs> um, but my timing was great. And uh, it was just, it was great to be able to be a part of, of, you know, at the end, coach putting me back in there, you know, in the game and be able to make a stop like that. I know you talked about watching this team from afar when you were in Cleveland. Um, what did you make of this team when you were away? Um, I think... Uh, not even what I make. I think it's what the NBA makes of this team. It's, it's just an amount of respect for the way that the Miami Heat plays the game um, and the way that these players attack the game. So, you know, I definitely, you know, looked at that. I've seen that these guys go hard. Whenever we play them, I always said, listen, we got to be ready because they coming. You know, they coming for us. And, um, you know, I did feel like they was missing something. Um, you know, with Dion being out especially, you know, that, that closer. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they was missing me, but I definitely felt when we played in the last time in, in Cleveland, when we won, we was going through all our stuff, and we wound up winning that game. I wound up telling you, I said, you guys are missing something. You guys are good, but you guys are missing. So I hope I can be a little bit of that um, to help us be a little bit better. What's the ceiling for this team? I, I, I don't want to put a ceiling on this team. You know, I don't want, I don't want the team to put a ceiling on, on themselves. You know, this, this, this is a good group of guys, you know. Um, you know, in the locker room, you know, on the court. Um, I feel like I already know them, first of all. You know, when I, wherever we played them, the love that everyone showed and vice versa. You know, when I come to the city of Miami last summer, hanging out with these guys with Adonis, I just feel like I know these guys already. So it's not like I'm the new guy, but, you know, I know them. Even though it's, it might be a little weird for some of them playing with me, uh, you know, here now. But, uh, you know, this is a good group, you know. And I, I just want us to go out there and understand that the day like today, we got to get better. Um, we got to understand our game, we got to know our game, and we got to build that confidence. And when we get on that basketball floor, then what we worked on, let's use that. And no, it's no selling. How have they grown? Some of the guys that were here before, when you were here a couple years ago, yeah. to where they are yeah. now. I mean, Tyler Johnson, um, you know, Jay Rich, you know, 
he's getting to play calls at the end of games now. You know, it's just, you know, and that's just two examples, you know, of, of, of these guys. And I, you love it. You know, I remember, you know, when I came in and, and Eddie Jones and, and Brian Grant and those guys kind of seen me go from here to, you know, here. It, it was in one year when they was here, but, you know, I think they was like amazed, you know, by how quick it happened. It's the same thing for me. You know, I'm, I'm proud of those guys. I'm proud of their growth. Um, and like you, Donna, I'm just happy to be here alone to ride with these guys and, and be able to help them, you know, continue to go on so they have all-star careers and hopefully Hall of Fame careers. Is there an expectation for your role? I don't have one. I'm a basketball player. And uh, Coach, no, I'm going I'm to do everything I can to, to make sure that this team um, is successful. And, you know, any night is a different role for me. So I'm, I'm, I have no ego coming back here. I have no expectations. You know, I just want to play basketball and, and, and hopefully be good more times than not and have more wins than, um, you know, than losses at the end of the year for sure. Now, Pat had said that he texted you, uh, no more pancakes, got to get on the veggies. <laughs> Is that true? Did he really send yeah, that we, to you? We had a conversation about it. <laughs> and uh, I was, you know, I, I was on the same page. I ate my last stack of pancakes when, when the trade went through. You know, I went to lunch with my guy. Uh, Brian in Cleveland, I said, it's our last lunch and this is my last bad meal. Um, but, you know, definitely I understand the culture. I understand what's expected, you know, here. So I got a lot of work to do. I'm coming in like, you know, like anybody else, you know, I come in, I got to do extra, you know, bike work, extra conditioning, you know, everything to make sure that I'm, I'm at my peak performance. And uh, it's going to take me a little while to get there, but I will. For those that don't know Pat Riley, obviously, as you know, uh, loves the body fat measurements. Oh, yeah. Have you already yeah, had that? T-shirts. Yeah. yeah, my first day. It's, yeah. They got T-shirts around here that say <laughs> "Weight and Body Fat." <laughs> <laughs> you know, my first day. You know, I was like, get on the scale. You know, I got on the scale and got on my body fat. It's like, all right, we gotta do some extra work. We cut, <laughs> cut some of that body fat down. I said, yeah, coach. You know, I, I picked up a little drinking in, in Cleveland a little bit. I drank a lot of wine. Yeah. You know, a lot of nights. Yeah. You know, losing. You know, the the way that we was losing at the end and, and the, the hardship I went through, my agent and all these things. You know, I was like. I get that taken down, you know, but um, and it's definitely expected, you know, and, and I know that, and like I said, I miss that. So, um, you know, I'm back and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to get to the place where I feel that I'm at my peak performance, that they feel I'm at my peak performance. So, you know, I can help this team down the stretch and into the playoffs. You mentioned about things going poorly there at the end in Cleveland. Um, what went wrong there? We start losing. <laughs> you know, winning cares all, losing makes everything seem bad. You know, we won 18 out of 19, everything was good. We started losing. And, you know, I, I, as I text, you know, the general manager, Kobe, you know, after everything went down, I thanked him for, you know, putting me in a good position. And also I told him he did one hell of a job um, to bring the guys that he brought into the organization. Um, and it's, it's not nothing negative against the guys that wasn't there, but it just wasn't working. It wasn't fitting the way that the, a championship organization want to see it fit. And they brought in some good pieces. So um, they're happy. I'm happy. Isaiah looks happy. Like, you know, <laughs> Jay Crowder went to a place that, you know, his father played. Like, you know, guys are happy and, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't, I don't want anybody to talk bad about, you know, the guys that was there, like it was their fault. No, it just, it didn't work. And that's okay. And you know, everyone's been on to their respective places and uh, everyone's happy. So that's a good thing. You're happy. You're here. How much longer? I don't know, you know, you leave it up to you know, Coach Riley, you know, he always told me I was going to play to 40 when I was, I was like, no, never. Now I'm at 36. I'm like, how did I even get here? You know, I, I said when I was young, I was going to play. Like, if I got a 10 years in, I was amazing. I was, I'd have been 31. I'm five years over that. So right now I'm just, you know, I'm playing the game and uh, I'm taking it year by year. You know, I'm going into the summer seeing how I feel, especially from this point on. And then we'll see, but I'm here forever. You know, this is Wayne County forever. I will always be here. And, you know, no matter where I go in the world, um, you know, I'm here, you know. And until I get done playing the game of basketball, I have on this Miami Heat jersey, and I will enjoy this ride as long as it lasts. I remember when LeBron and Chris were here as your teammates, they were saying that you need to have one of those Kobe farewell tours. No. Are you going to have no, a farewell I don't tour? I one of those. It's, I talked to Kobe about that. You know, and he was like, it's, it was exhausting. You know, as flattering as it was, it was very exhausting as well. And uh, I don't, I don't I'm, not a, I'm not a narcissist like that. I don't think I need it. Not calling Kobe a narcissist. <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he earned that and he needed that. But I, I can't set out and say, 
I want a farewell tour like Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I'm, that's that's not who I am. So, um, you know, I'm a, when the time comes, and I don't want to talk about it because it's not here yet. But when that time comes, I announce it in my own D Wade fashion, the way that I do, and uh, hopefully I can move on from it and um, and live and live on the memories from that point on. So, if you do decide that you want to play again next year, uh, this summer. One of your friends who you just played with, LeBron James, is also a free agent. Would you consider recruiting him to play with you again? No. Nah. <laughs> no, I ain't got nothing to do with, you know, none of that. You know, I, I, one thing I know is, um, you know, he's, he makes his own decisions, you know, and, you know, so when he gets to that point, and um, hopefully, um, you know, he takes a good look at the place he's at um, and, and really gives that real consideration and then go from there. You know, it's his, his decision and I don't want nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> well, you know, everybody's got a banana boat theory, right? Yeah, so why, no. why not banana boat in Miami? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, <laughs> do we I'm, make too much of the banana boat? I think so. I think <laughs> so. I think, well, we make too much of a lot of things, but, uh, I am out of all that. I'm out of all the gospel talk. I don't want nothing to do with any, you know, I recruit when I'm done playing, <laughs> you know, I recruit if it's a buyout and I got to call somebody. But, um, you know, I'll leave that up to, you know, the Pat Riley's, uh, the Andy's, you know, the Knicks, the Mickey's, and all those guys who run the organization very well. Dwayne, thank you so much. No problem, Joe. Thank you, brother. Great to see you again, Great man. Same too.